Hey guys, my name is Aldas and in today's video I'm going to be talking about Robert Kubica and how good he was in his first career. Now, if you enjoy the content here, then don't forget to like, subscribe, all of that good stuff. And uh, yeah, let's jump into it. So Robert Kubica is a really strange situation actually in Formula 1. I mean, we've seen drivers come back from injuries before, but never like this. This is something completely different and on another level. Uh, Robert is obviously... Uh, being hyped up so much for 2019 and I think some of the pressure does need to be taken off him um, but in this video like I said I'm going to be looking at how how good was he before his accident because he really was an amazing driver and it's just incredible to see uh, someone like him come back and after his uh, horrific injury which I'll get to in a, in a little bit uh, it's just on a human level an incredible story uh, of coming back into the sport and obviously many people want to see him do well and a lot of people who don't know uh, who Robert Kubica is might be thinking you know who is this guy that's you know why is everyone so excited to see him back and it's because he was so amazing in his first career just simple as that there's no you know there's no exaggeration he was a fantastic racing driver and it will be a fantastic to see him back in 2019. Now, in terms of uh, Robert Kubica's career, he has had 76 race starts. Uh, he has scored 273 points, had one fastest lap, 12 podiums, one pole position, and one win as well. So, definitely good stats. And he really began his Formula 1 career, I suppose you could say, with a test for Renault uh, back in 2005. Now, this was because he won the uh, Formula Renault Championship back in 2005, and he got to test basically as a reward uh, for the team and drove the R25, which was, of course, Fernando Alonso's uh, championship winning car. So that was his first sort of taste of F1. It was only a, really a test as a reward, but his start in F1 came in 2006 with the uh, BMW Sauber team. Now, he actually joined halfway through, uh, replacing Jacques Villeneuve, and despite not scoring that many points, he actually managed to get a podium in his debut season uh, in Formula 1. Uh, so, I mean, it wasn't obviously his full debut season, uh, obviously he only did half of it after Hungary, but still, a podium in Monza, that was an incredible achievement for a, for a driver like him, and also becoming the first ever Polish driver in Formula 1 as well, so big achievement, but then BMW signed him uh, to partner Nick Heidfeld and, make, and making his first full uh, Formula 1 uh, season in 2007. Now, during the start of his BMW Sauber career, one definite highlight was the uh, crash he had in Canada in 2007. It was a huge crash, no other way uh, around it. It was a massive crash, and I'm surprised he didn't get a serious inju injury from it, honestly. Uh, it was just spectacular, but happily, he was all fine. He did have to miss the next Grand Prix in the uh, USA, being replaced by Sebastian Vettel uh, for that one uh, race, uh, which he then made his debut. Um, but he had a great 2007, and just building, building, and building in confidence. And uh, did not he did not beat his teammate in that first season, uh, Nick Heidfeld, but Nick is a very quick driver, and Robert was, uh, you know, becoming... Uh, you know, a very quick driver as well. That BMW Sauber car was quick, but it was really 2008 where we saw his talents. When that car really became good, uh, Robert just delivered. He got his first ever win at the Canadian Grand Prix. Uh, quite amazing, actually. A year later, after that horrific crash at the uh, 2007 Canadian Grand Prix, he gets his first ever win for the BMW Sauber team. That car was very competitive that year. Not quite good enough to win the title, but very competitive nonetheless. And he, then he got a handful of podiums and then a pole position as well. So it was a really impressive time where we really saw the um, we saw the rise of Robert Kubica and really as the next star. He had a fantastic 2008 and finished the championship in fourth on the same amount of points actually as Kimi Raikkonen. So a great, great achievement in 2008 and a fantastic talent emerging in Formula 1. He really was a great racing driver and it was just, it was almost a matter of time before we saw him in a big team and basically ch uh, challenging for championships. Now, the 2009 season obviously saw massive rule changes, as we remember, and it really hit BMW Sauber quite hard. They uh, dropped in performance quite a lot. Just remember, in 2008, they actually managed to win a race with Robert, like I said, an incredible achievement, and score consecutive and very good and constant podiums. So they were always up there, all there or thereabouts. Not quite championship contenders, but solid nonetheless. Um, 2009, sadly, would not be like that for them. Uh, they lost out heavily in the rule changes, but despite this, and despite the drop in form, uh, the uh, team still managed to get two podiums, uh, one of which came uh, with Robert Kubica. 
Now, Robert was very close with uh, his teammate Nick Heidfeld in 2009 and just missed out to uh, beating him, but they were right next to each other in the championship. And Nick Heidfeld was a very good driver. And like I said, this BMW Sauber period was really building Robert into the driver he is today. We saw the amount of talent that he had and just the natural speed. It's just the gift that good Formula 1 drivers have. But then at the end of 2009 was a career-changing moment for him because he announced that he would be uh, joining Renault for the 2010 season. Now, there's no denying that I am biased towards Robert Kubica. I'm a big fan of his. If you watch my uh, predictions video, I sort of explained a little bit why I'm so uh, such a big fan of Robert. Um, but I will say, without a shadow of a doubt, and this is not disputed, that the 2010 season, his one and only season with Renault, was absolutely stunning. If anyone needed proving why this guy was an incredible racing driver and a, a talent for the future, undoubtedly, it was the 2010 season. Now, if you guys remember that season... There were three teams that were basically fighting for the championship, Ferrari, McLaren, and Red Bull. And each one of their drivers had a very decent car. That's six drivers already. And they were all battling out for the championship. And the team below them, Mercedes, arguably the uh, the fourth fastest car, was also, you know, getting the uh, off podium as well. But Robert Kubica, who now partnered uh, Vitaly Petrov, who was not the best driver in the world, but he wasn't bad absolutely shone in that uh, Renault in 2010. He pulled out some incredible results and got on the podium so many times. And just remember how close 2010 was. That Renault was not a bad car. Don't, you know, don't get me wrong completely, but he absolutely outperformed that car. He showed how much talent he had with some amazing results. Uh, a second place in uh, Australia, a third in Monaco, and then a third in Belgium as well. Now, Monaco and Belgium, those are not easy tracks. Those are seriously difficult tracks when you think about uh, the Formula 1 calendar. And that Monaco weekend especially was absolutely incredible. Just remember, this is the Monaco Grand Prix where you need a quick car, you need a drivable car. And, you know, Robert Kubica definitely made it work. He qualified well. I think he qualified in second place, uh, if I remember correctly. And then finished the race in third on the podium. And the entire season, he was just so consistent, qualified so well, and scored so well as well. Uh, finished the entire season in eighth place on 136 points. His teammate, by the way, only scored 27 points. Now, like, once again, I know Vitaly is not the best uh, racing driver in the world by any uh, stretch in the imagination. But he's not terrible, um, I suppose. But... Robert Kubica, he really proved himself and people were easily noticing. I mean, Ferrari especially were taking a notice of this uh, Polish driver who was just a talent of the future and his pace was so raw. He was quick in qualifying, he could deliver in the race. And like I said, that 2010 season, it was just stunning. When you look at the title battle between the top three teams and Mercedes who were also sort of punching sometimes in there as well. And Robert was also just always there, scoring great points and good qualifyings. So, you know, undoubtedly emerged as one of the big talents of, uh, of that season. And like I said, Robert definitely emerged in the 2010 season as a much more mature driver than in uh, than he was at BMW Sauber. And he was now almost the complete package. He was missing one big thing, and that is a uh, title winning car, or at least a car that he can challenge for the title in. And there was a very, very big move. He'd been, uh, he was good friends with Fernando Alonso. There was a really funny video. I don't know if I, I might actually be able to link it in the description uh, of, um, I think it was might have been at Suzuka where they were on sort of the driver parade and uh, he was just talking to Fernando and Fernando's Ferrari hat fell off and Robert picked up and uh, sort of pretended to put it on his head. And it was just a little bit, I don't know, it was a little bit funny there. And what was really funny about it is because Robert himself has said that he had a contract signed with Ferrari for 2012. And this would have been a massive move. Anyone on the grid would love to go to Ferrari. We know how strong the pull is. And for them to seek out Robert Kubica was... It would have been quite strange because Robert wasn't a world champion at the time. But of course he was a big talent. So it's... Yeah, it would have been a really good move for him. And a move that, in my opinion... I just can't believe that, you know, it was cut short. But, I mean, we all remember how bad the car was in 2012 and what Fernando could have done with it. And I think it would have been amazing to see how far Robert Kubica could have... He could have taken that 2012 Ferrari up, maybe uh, fighting for the championship as well. We remember how quick Fernando was. And, by the way, I'm not saying for a second that this man is as quick or quicker than Fernando Alonso. Because we will never know. But... I think it would have been just fantastic for him to make that move to Ferrari. Yes, despite that ridiculously bad Ferrari car in 2012. And just see, how would he stack up against Fernando Alonso, a legend of Formula 1 who beat Michael Schumacher? Where would he rank in that sort of... Where would he rank among the legends of F1? How good of a talent he really was. That is what really... 
that's what the saddest thing is about him not you know progressing further in his Formula One career and never moving to Ferrari but happily he, you know he always maintained a good uh, relationship with Fernando whether that would have stayed at Ferrari I seriously doubt it but everyone always liked uh, you know Rob Kubica he was never one of the drivers that was hated he always seemed to be happy he was such a great person uh, not, a, not a dirty racing driver by any means of, of the imagination he was a hard racer a great racer and yeah after the 2010 season and apparently that uh, Ferrari contract, which he said that he had for 2012, the world was in his hands. Now, obviously, Renault did retain him for 2011. And coming back into the uh, pre-season testing at Valencia in the uh, Lotus Renault, as it was now, he actually set the fastest lap of the, uh, final, of the final day in testing. Now, obviously, this means absolutely nothing, by the way, because testing is never a good sign. But it showed that the car was quick, and we know it was quick, actually, for 2011, and that Robert still had it. And obviously going into the 2011 season, there was a lot of expectation and a lot of excitement as well. But of course, as we know, Robert had a very, very big and life-changing accident. Now, whilst he was out on a rally just before the season was about to begin, he uh, had a big, big crash and uh, one of the guardrails actually went through his car. It's actually shocking looking at the images uh, to even think that anything like this is even possible. But sadly, Robert was very unlucky and uh, obviously had life-threatening injuries. He had very bad injuries on both his uh, leg and especially his arm. He uh, actually uh, suffered partial amputation, so some of the arm uh, basically came off, which is kind of horrible to even think about, and uh, fractures as well, compound fractures to his right elbow, shoulder, and leg. Um, yeah, obviously, like I said, horrible to even think about, and hor the images are... You know, it's it just shows you the reality of motorsport, really, and it is just very dangerous. I mean, we almost take the safety of uh, racing these days uh, for granted. I mean, until something big happens, like like the crash with Robert Kubica and what happened to his arm, almost losing his life, and sadly, of course, what happened to Jules Bianchi in 2014, where he did lose his life. So, you know, motorsport has always been dangerous, and it's always going to be dangerous, but that's... I suppose that's the game they play. And Robert, you know, he didn't go rallying just for fun. He went there to be a more complete driver, to improve his skills. You know, like you see with Fernando Alonso going and testing himself in Le Mans, in uh, Daytona, in Indy, whatever. So it's just these, you know, it's just the racing drivers uh, and the competitiveness they have. So it is what it is. And obviously, like I said, many people, and me included, thought that we would never see Robert again. This looked, and it was very obvious very, very soon, that it was going to be... Put him, put, let's just say put him out from a Formula 1 car forever. It never looked like he would come back. The Ferrari boss also said that he thought Robert Kubica would never be back in an F1 car. But out of the blue, amazingly, in 2017, Robert Kubica did like a one-off test with Renault just to see what he'd be like. And somehow this spiraled into a... And it wasn't really even a test with Renault. It was just a session using their 2013 car just, you know, to see Robert back in a Formula 1 car. And like I said, this sort of spiraled into him almost uh, coming into Renault and racing for them. Uh, he became a bit of a test driver there and did a couple of sessions with them as well. I think there was even a mid-season test. But sadly, he did see very, very quickly that he just was not going to get anywhere in Renault. And happily, Williams snapped him up. They gave him the opportunity to be uh, their test and reserve uh, driver. He missed out for the opportunity to race for them in 2018, but obviously stayed with them as the test and reserve driver. And then all of a sudden in 2019... Uh, just It's just the way this driver market has fallen. Robert Kubica, a man who we thought would never be back in a Formula 1 car and a man who had so much talent that we thought would never be fulfilled, is back in a Formula 1 car for 2019. Now, it's just an incredible story on a human level, I mean, for him to be back. And I just can't thank Williams enough for giving uh, him this opportunity. Whether he'll be the uh, old Robert that we know... I don't know, probably not. I'm not going to get my hopes too high, even though I'm a huge Kubica fan, but I just hope... And the only thing I, I the, the only expectations I have of Robert is for him to be competitive. And if he can come back and prove to people that even after such horrible accidents, you can overcome that sort of adversity and come back and be competitive in a Formula 1 car. That's all I hope for Robert to do. And as a Robert Kubica fan, I will be cheering him on in 2019 till the, uh, till the end of the uh, season. So I'm going to end the video here. It was a really strange video to make because it's just reminiscing about how much I like Robert Kubica. He was one of my favorite racing drivers, as I've said. And I talked about him a little bit in my uh, F1 predictions as well. And I said where he, I think he would come uh, there as well. So check out the predictions. Um, but yeah, I'm going to end the video off here. But what do you guys think? Did you watch Robert Kubica back in the day? How good uh, do you think he was? Do you maybe uh, think he was a little bit overrated? That's absolutely fine. I mean, uh, everyone's entitled to their opinion. And a comment in the box below about what you thought of his uh, previous career, about his crash, and what, how you think he's going to do in 2019. I want to know all of your guys' thoughts. That'd be just absolutely incredible. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for, for watching, guys. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.